Hello, welcome back to Venus Sushi Life Noting. In this episode, we're gonna do a bit of study of this uh, spider web generator. Basically, um, the other day I stumbled into um, this uh, spider web generator. I, uh, it was made using the animation node setup. And if you look at this uh, video demo by Kalistigis, you will see um, what this tool can do. Uh, it's actually really, really interesting and very, very well done um, tool. Um, I think you can actually purchase this at a Blender uh, market. And yeah, I think I'm, I will try to do uh, something similar using Spreadshock add-on, but it won't be as polished, but um, you will see the whole process. And then um, let's try to create something like this. I like how he actually did this uh, he started with a circle and then he made a couple of points and then this creates these shapes for the web and then he, al he also have different parts for the spider web and then th all these details made the spider web looks really believable and I'll so I'll, I'm gonna try to make a simple one real quick so compositing and I will be using Spreadshock add-on instead of uh, animation nodes because for for modeling, I, I tend to use Spreadshock um, because it has a lot of tool. I will start with um with an Angon, but I'll start real quick. It's always to do this. I think it's a I think it's quick time. I uh, it tend to somehow do this. So Spreadshock and then Angon, and we're gonna connect it to Viewer Draw. Save it as SV spider web demo so there are many ways actually there are probably a lot of uh, different spider web but the one that you you have in your mind probably um, similar to this so you you start with a you know like like bunch of circles and then you want to have like, like all these lines coming out and that, that can be like a two different parts and then for spider you you tend to want to you want to erase some of these and then to get more details and then things like that so we're gonna do similar to that so instead of a um, normal end gone we want to use just the edges and you can randomize in the in this uh, random using this random r and ra random phi and then randomize the seed but that's a uh, that's totally optional uh, you will see later the sides um, you can start you can just use six, seven, doesn't matter. Keep it like that. And the next thing I will do is probably um, make a couple of this uh, end gone. So I'm gonna use range float, plug this into the radius, and you can see you can see something like this already now developing. And you can keep this uh, as integer, but I will tr I will use a uh, actually use a float, so we, we have control over the smallest and the largest um, of this uh, web thingy. And if you like, you can add some kind of randomization in the seed. So I will actually do that using range integer plug into the seed. So we have count 10 so 10 random seeds and 10 different radius so we have this uh if this kind of uh setup now let's continue on and see like like i said if you if it's too random it start to look like a like a drunk spider web but just keep it simple and let's see we can create the lines using uv connection Normally, this is like a, sometimes it just works. Sometimes you need you need to try trial and error. So that's a, okay. That's kind of work. So you can see that with this thing, uh, you might find normally with a spider web, there is there is this uh, one more lines that kind of extruding up. This is actually very very important for spider. I, I don't know why, but. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If we slice the 
polygon data here. Um, let me try. Okay, not probably not not over there. Maybe slice it up here. Oh, apparently I cannot do that either. I need to merge it first. Mesh join. And now we have this uh, join mesh. And then we need to use a slice. Now we can slice this, uh, this spider web and slice it. Maybe just uh, a couple. So we only have like a 10 right so we start with a uh, we, we start with 10 and we we kill uh, two of the circles now we have only um, eight so okay let's continue and uh, we have this line coming out and if you want to have um, more details um, let me see there's a line over there right yep it's just not very visible you can kind of say okay this is like enough this is like pretty good enough but then you probably want to do more and not just stop here so we're gonna try to make some kind of detailing here on the edge so we try to pull this line to add a slight more detail and to do that I think we can separate all the edges mm, I think we need to have delete loose here first of all to clean up the polygon data and then we're gonna use a polygon boom and here we're gonna separate all the edges so this is giving me an error hopefully Oh, that's weird. It's giving me an error. This index out of range. Why is that? Okay, now it uh, seems to be fixed. No, it's not fixed. Polygon boom separate. Let me try something like this so maybe not a good idea to put a list slice over there maybe we, we do it differently so polygon boom now we should should have like a all separate edges i think this is what i should have done and then we are separating all the edges and then now we're gonna use uh, vector interpolations and here is slightly tricky but we're gonna use a uh, range float between 0 and 1 let's make a couple of sample now see all the edges become these points and for the points we can use UV connection and we should have something like this so we basically resampling every edges um, of this uh, end gone and the next thing we can do is to use a vector attraction so this is new I hardly use this node but um, I think this this is perfect for for what we are doing so hopefully I'm doing this correctly and just plug all the vertices there and then the vectors can be can go out um, let me think maybe it's better to do it over here before the before the UV connection yeah so it seems to be doing something now right you can see the vector attraction is doing something to the line doing something pretty weird you can play with the coefficient somewhere so there's a lot of different functions for vector attractions but I think the one that I need is this guy right here 
because I can control whether I want to make like a flower or the opposite, like a, like a, you know, like a spider, you know, like it's being pulled in. Um, let me check. This thing is indeed pretty tricky. Um, let me check. Inverse exponential. Maybe this is the one that I need. Nope, it's doing. It's not doing it. Inverse cubic. Nope. Let me try to increase the amplitude and then coefficient. Yeah, probably do it. Yeah, probably this is kind of correct. Yeah, pretty interesting. And maybe at this point, so like like I said, I think the spider web is, can be kind of tricky we before we do the in factor interpolation stuff this looks kind of correct so this, this is like a simpler version of the web spider and I really want to pull this one in you know like instead of pushing it out and making like a like flower like this because I tried it the, in the other day and it was actually working let me try opening it up spider triangle spider SV spider web so this is a simpler version where I just get rid of the edges there's also another one where is the spider vector influence maybe this one I, I name it so yeah this one actually works so let's continue with this and break it down a little bit so this is a spider web with a tractor and let's see so we started with an an end gone and then we have polygon boom and then we use vector interpolations and then UV connections and then this start to get a little bit complex right here but basically so that's the line that's that's the the UV connection but there's this uh, list item this is kind of tricky if you don't know what you're doing and the list split so this guy kind of tricky but a spectral can do that so we get that line but this this is the one that I'm interested in and here I'm actually using factor attractions okay factor attractions and then this one so negative value for the coefficient okay so positive value give you that but negative value so positive give you like a flower and the opposite give you something that looks more like a spider web. So that's where I actually kind of stuck just now. Uh, let me save this. If I go back to SP spider web demo, save this and turn this on see you get like a flower there but if you go the opposite direction you should get um, what is the opposite of flower a star maybe okay and then I actually play around with the amplitude so that part is kind of tricky this is like a that's the shape I actually want but in this case the the star shape is too strong so maybe Gaussian, maybe I'm using Gaussian.
yeah here actually the thing is very very strong maybe what i did actually uh back there is uh to control this uh range float and just make this smaller there you go that's a little bit better ah trickier than i thought that means that means here i was actually pretty lucky to get this working so factor attractions pull or push the edge and the next thing i did i join everything and then separating it separating it again and then i use a list mask to basically uh, randomize um, the spider web so because sometimes uh, with the spider web uh, things just broken you know in between um, this line here and then you have like empty one and it becomes like a like a hanging like a spider web like this you see it in a horror movie and yeah that's that's a uh, that's what it is you know and once you have this spider it's kind of like a spider web you you can bake it out and then here i'm basically joining them all together remove double and then i'm using a skin modifier for that skin modifier and smooth it and subsurface so there's a lot uh, there's a lot here but um the one that's really doing the hard work i think is the factor attraction and uv connection so basically yeah whatever lines coming out it's it's need to be connected again and uh i don't know it's spider web is very very interesting it's very very procedural very generative and because if you if you check on youtube and try to find a spider making a spider web you will see the the whole process uh, spider is like kind of like a st stitching it sometimes it looks like a spiral maybe it is spiral and what i'm doing here is a uh, not exactly correct but yeah there you go that's a like a study of spider webs this part is a little bit tricky um, but um, if you try uh, you study this video and then you try to make it again yourself this factor attraction is very very um, useful in particular and it, it it is the one that's kind of making it looks like a spider web otherwise it just gonna look like a like a simple spider web like uh, this one right here uh, let me check SV spider web so this is like the simple version right uh, but there you go yeah and with a like I said it's not as good as the the one uh, made by Carlis using animation nodes I definitely and highly recommend you uh, if you really want a spider web you can purchase it at blender marketplace uh, purchase it from him and you can use it right away with a spray chalk one slightly this need a lot of a uh, little more work I think in order for it to work I, I what I really like is that um, if a user ever want to make like spider web they just need to make a point you know like a bunch of points and then suddenly it's gonna generate uh, like this kind of spider web for them that's gonna be kind of nice I like what uh, Carlis did basically he did provide some kind of a, a couple of points like a control and then from based on these points it's gonna connect these points and generate spider web so that's a uh, very very nice if you look through the documentation he gives for the nodes it's actually a very well done uh, um, yeah so there you go that's a quick study of spider web um, using spare talk add-on but and hopefully you find this useful and let me know if you have any question or maybe something you want to add but there you go this is how i might actually make a spider web using spare talk add-on. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.